Vanu Podcast number 119, handling objections from the First Realm, Serval Society, and your pursuit of Vanu and self-liberation. Author's Notes. The following is an article I wrote a couple years back that I've rewritten uh, and updated for the Agoras Nexus website. Uh, here it is in article and audio format. While 2021 has forced many to consider the realm of self-liberation, even if for mere survival, there are indeed still others trying to make their way out of the first realm, yet who are facing objection after objection from friends or loved ones. This is furthered when entering the realm of Vanu and radical lifestyle changes. Nomadic pursuits, pseudonyms, ethical enclave trading, which is essentially agorism, uh, among other radical items? It's safe to say, many folks will think you've gone off the deep end and believe you're crazy for turning down all of these so-called amenities and benefits afforded by the great coercive society. Ha. Huh. Nonsense. No, you're just an individual striving to preserve your autonomy and live out your principles in the here and now. A self-liberator who sees right through the bullshit put forth by the servile society. Might I also say, an agorist building a peaceful counter-economy one trade at a time. Anyway, you're looking to liberate yourself from those who falsely imagine themselves to be your rulers, yet are facing resistance. What advice would I posit for dealing with this? Simply put, and most importantly, don't let the criticisms or expectations from those in the first realm affect the plan you have for your pursuit of Vanu. In other words, don't feel guilt, shame, or whatever for living a lifestyle not approved by those in the Serval society. If you're a van nomad working a few half days a week, making little enough to not be liable for income theft, an individual may try to guilt you by accusing you of freeloading off the system. Needless to say, in my opinion, a discussion would likely not be fruitful with someone who would level such an accusation. They're likely jealous that you're in far more control of your time, and therefore your life, and so it says more about them than about you. If you're facing disassociation for refusing to be poisoned in one way or another, take your autonomy and life force elsewhere to folks that you can trust and rely upon, and who would respect you enough to never ask you to do such a thing. And as one more example, if your aspirations are on a sailboat or flotel, floating hotel, and international waters, surely don't let anyone put a damper on your imagination. Think bigger, even. The above all may appear to go without saying, but it's critically important and worth reiterating. As Smuggler and XYZ put it in second round book on strategy, quote, Give up collectivist thought, especially asking for permission and requiring others to support you before you do anything, end quote. You might even have to go about it alone initially, but there's never been a better time, likelihood, and urgency to meet up in physical space and time. That, and as Ray recommended back in the 1960s, to paraphrase, it truly is best to start developing your capabilities alone. And the best place to meet other free thinkers and self-liberators is when you're living like they do, traveling to the places they travel. Waiting for others might also ensure that you never leave the theoretical realm, or worse yet, an action leading to an even more undesirable situation. Especially in the rapidly changing 2020s, the realm of self-liberation is for freedom pioneers, those willing to experiment and take some risks, and also for those who take the time to exercise their collectivist spooks. Put another way, this is doing the internal work to address and undo a lifetime of programming and propaganda, because in addition to cutting physical ties to the servile society, those mentally enslaving ties must be severed. Limiting thoughts, lacking confidence, defaulting to an authority figure, eliminating bad and un unhelpful habits, exiting the Babylon pharmaceutical disease paradigm, etc. Without addressing the mind, and it will probably take some time, Vanu, or self-liberation generally, will likely not be a lifestyle change, but rather a foray with a return to a conventional lifestyle. What does this mental work look like? For me, it took a year of essentially being alone here on the homestead. Lots of time in nature, pondering the last 20-something you know, years of my life, and uh, realizing how many thoughts I had that really weren't my own. It also required me to open my mind to possibilities within this reality that I wouldn't have entertained previously. And opening the mind and realizing you really know nothing is difficult, uh, but quite freeing at the same time. And of course, this work is constantly ongoing. In conclusion, I'll leave you with the words of Tom Marshall, a.k.a. Rayo. Quote, Whether one will be happier as a free man or as a slave partly depends upon the individual. But this choice is not open to most libertarians. Relative contentment and servitude is possible only for those who believe in it. Most libertarians are too independent and well-informed. For libertarians, the choice is between freedom and neurosis, end quote. So, what's it going to be? Freedom or neurosis? 
You've just heard the Vanu podcast number 119, an audio version of Handling Objections from the First Realm and Servile Society in your pursuit of Vanu and self-liberation, an article I originally wrote a couple of years back and uh, is published in my book, Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, uh, which you can pick up at libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu book or at that very same link. You can download it for free uh, and, uh, and check it out. Uh, but yes, an article that I, I, I wrote then, published in my book, and uh, is now rewritten and updated for the Agoras Nexus website, which you have just heard uh, today. Uh, that's about all I have for you. I was, uh, you know, I had a podcast scheduled this past week, but uh, things have been crazy here at the homestead. We had a, a premature lamb, and uh, you know, pregnant lamb, all sorts of stuff going on here. Just uh, haven't had time to, uh, I guess, I've uh, been focus fo focusing on the physical space. Um, but uh, yeah, lots, uh, lots to come here uh, in terms of the podcast. Uh, and of course, we're always uh, building things up here at the Free Republic of Pasnia, uh, pasnia.com. Uh, if you haven't already, please do hop in the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence Telegram chat uh, to join the Second Realm and uh, to start building your reputation uh, if you haven't already and uh, to get advice to things like uh, Fawny Fest uh, as well as the overall Pasnia and Second Realm network uh, where, yes, uh, we are certainly uh, <laughs> uh, trying to liberate ourselves from the First Realm and the Servile Society. So if... Uh, um, you know, you're new to this uh, this subject matter, and uh, you know this this article, um, this podcast is the first the first time you've heard of Vanu or self liberation. Uh, you know, welcome, glad you're here, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, we can provide some solutions and our resources for you to uh, uh, to continue your your pursuit. So uh, yeah, with that said, guys, thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, until next time, always remember, Vanu is yours for the making, and the second realm is yours for the building. Cheers. Vanu means relative physical and vulnerability to coercion. Vanu is a contraction of voluntary and not vulnerable. Vanu is somewhat like freedom or security, but those words mean many different things to different people. Rather than argue about what those words ought to mean, I speak of Vanu. Coercion includes murder, mayhem, slavery, robbery, rape, extortion, pollution, any physical interference with peaceful activities of another, whether by individuals or organizations. Coercion, especially institutionalized forms such as war, regimentations, and taxes, is one of the major problems of mankind. Practically all past attempts at solution have been top-down efforts to change society as a whole. Since the days of Babylon, there have been countless attempts to reform governments, take over governments, destroy governments, and manipulate public opinion. At most, such efforts bring temporary relief. Usually they have little effect. Often, they make matters worse. Vanu life represents a different approach to the problem. Vanu life does not waste space scolding government officials or proclaiming how society ought to be. Vanu life speaks to you as an individual or small group and suggests ways you can avoid exploiting and being exploited. As you reduce the vulnerability, not only do you help yourself, Indirectly, you also help others by decreasing support of criminal institutions. Vanu is not necessarily only a few. Vanu will expand as there are more people willing to do. A Vanuan is a person who has achieved relative invulnerability to coercion. There are many kinds. Some live in the wilderness, where outsiders rarely go. Others live under the earth. Others move from place to place, living in vans, campers, buses, boats, or tents. Some have been Vanu for ages, people such as gypsies, mountain men, hobos, seminoles. Others are recent refugees from the dying cities. This issue describes some of the equipment and techniques used. In future issues, I hope you will add your knowledge to what is in here. Vanu life. How to live and let live. Out of sight and mind of those unwilling to let live. By people who are doing it. To order your paperback copy today, just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu Life. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu Life. Or to download this publication for free, visit vanupodcast.com forward slash VL.